Scruffy, I know I said this uh, like two minutes ago, but I'd like to tell you a story. Oh, I love story time. Um, I want a snack first. We don't have any snacks. I ate all of it. But there's a picnic basket right there. That thing is about to pull something out of the picnic basket. I want that. No, that's that's not a picnic. That's a Moses basket. And uh, that's a crocodile. Uh, uh, mo uh, you... Moses are actually delicacies in the Middle East. Oh. Oh, well then we're fine. Uh, this is that's a but but it's a baby crocodile, so not a Moses, so we can't eat it. Uh, it might. I be, could probably uh, eat it. I'm a I'm Australian, so I could probably eat it. Um, you can't though. I've been to Louisiana. They eat crocodile and gator. Okay. Well, actually, you well should, then, that's not uh, a gator. let's eat the crocodile. Well, let's eat the crocodile as long as it doesn't grow too big. Oh shit. Uh, more meat, more meat for me. You can share. Yeah, that's that's gonna take a while to barbecue, and then it's gonna go off. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh. Oh, no, we'll, we'll feed some to these guys. They'll they'll share it. I think these assholes are crashing our picnic. Nah, no, they're, they're laughing. They're having, a, they're having a good time. We have fun here. I don't know. Oh, see? He's already shaking things up. Look at that. He makes sparkles look, appear. What a fun guy. Look, that guy just farted fire for one, and two, nobody brings eye lasers to a picnic. It's just but not polite. That blue guy was given one of them a hug. It was happy. Okay, and maybe... now there's a happy bird, and they're hitting the gong. Maybe the blue and the red guy can stay for dessert, but the big green guy, he has got to go. What, what can we do okay, about this? Okay, well, if he goes, he's going to take that king uh, fuzzball with him. Unacceptable. We we have to stop this travesty. Ah, oh, shit. Well, well, we got taken away by the birds, so that's going to be a little while before we can get the, the king back. Damn, damn, damn. This sounds like a setup for an adventure game. It sounds like a setup for a legend. That's... No, that wasn't a joke. But this is Croft, Legend <laughs> of the Gollows. It's, um, it's a really bad game. In spite of how good the music is, and how funny that intro uh, can be, it's really, really not well designed. Uh, how bad are we talking on a scale of uh, 1 to... Well... How many, uh, how many Sonic 2006s are we talking here? Like, one, it's, two, it's maybe than, half? It's, it's less than one Sonic 2006, but it's... It's like, you know how... Everyone, you know, Mario 64 was just that good straight off the bat? I do not, I do remember Mario 64 being a good time, yeah. Yeah, this is like... Imagine if, like, there were a bunch of failures that led up to Mario 64. This would be one of those failures. Um, we play as Croc, this, uh, da crocodile. I, uh, I definitely appreciate it when video games tell me up front what I'm getting into, and when you tell me the protagonist's name is Croc, that's, uh, that's good product placement. Hmm. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on, even just in this first screen. Uh, so we can, uh, run and, uh, jump if we jump in the middle of the air. We do a ground pound. And we can spin things, like that Dantini that we killed over there. Fortunately, the Dantini came back to life, so he can always harass us. So do enemies always come back to life, or is it only the Dantinis? Pretty sure it's every single enemy. Um, we also picked up a colored gem and a one of the gobbos in the previous screen. There's usually one gobbo in every screen of a single level, and then like two in one of the screens. There's okay, six gobos okay. in um, each level. And uh, what, what do the killer gems do for us? Well, uh, we'll find out at the, just at the end of the level. What I want to point out uh, first, though, is that uh, the purple gem that we got uh, that was near the Dantini, yep. that was actually uh, disguised as a regular gem. And that's a really, really terrible uh, way to lengthen gameplay. Clever bastards. It means that if you have, like, a really long line of gems that's off the beaten path, you have to go and collect all of them, because you never know if one of them might have the uh, colored gem you need. Well, I mean, you know, that just, uh, that's just there to encourage those completionists to, uh, to really appreciate their, uh, their impulses, you know. Because they may want to get 100% anyway, and they're like, oh, I'm going to, oh, almost made it in the drink there. Uh, you know, they're going to you know, have the whole thing where they're like, oh, I want to grab everything, I can't miss anything, and then they get rewarded for it. If anything, we're just encouraging bad life decisions. 
Mm. And I do indeed get 100% uh, in this game. Oh I still, my. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be getting through without dying. Um, but yeah, we'll be getting 100% because uh, there's a whole secret world that we have to collect everything to unlock anyway. Um, so in this screen, this is th that gong um, that n is near the worm. If you smash that uh, with your tail spin, you will end the level. But we haven't gotten all six gobos yet. Uh, that doesn't Nor seem to be that doesn't seem to be very well advertised. Doesn't seem like the game really lets you know. Hey, if you hit this, the ga the level's over. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to, I didn't uh, intend to hide that very well. That was me running around, not remembering where the yellow gem was for about a minute, and then I remembered that you have to jump in this hole that a worm jumped out of. Um, I'm going to assume that on the way down, uh, you definitely got to bonk him on the noggin, and that will teach him a valuable lesson about hiding in wells that are covered in lava. Uh, that's, that's a fair assumption to make. Uh, so here's one of the first things that's really annoying about the game, is that the, uh, the camera is just a little bit too... It doesn't look, uh, down enough. It's kind of more behind you than it is above you. Which uh, makes it hard to actually see what's below you, which is going to be a problem later on. Was this a uh, was this a dual shot game, or was this before they came up with the twin sticks? Ha! Huh. So that was why I should have pointed it out then. Um, but oh, first I should point out the um, the reason we were getting those colored gems was we had to unlock this uh, secret door. Not and then we door, and uh, then we continue the picnic with the Jello. Okay, I see. Yeah. Uh, Every level has the five color gems. When you get all of them, you can go to a bonus area, which will always have the sixth gobbo. Mm. Um, and then there's and also an ending, an ending uh, gong there for you to hit. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And then but, you uh, become really tiny again because birds yeah, are magical. And then the uh, the bird whisks you off. But um, yeah, the uh, this was released right around the time that Dual Shock either was just coming out or hadn't come out yet, but yeah, it wasn't developed for it. So, you can use the analog sticks to control it, but you can only use the analog sticks or the D-pad. You can't say, have DualShock enabled and use the D-pad. Mm, so, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You must either eat somebody else's cake or have your cake. Oh, that's, that's a rough decision. Mm. And, uh, it's kind of annoying because it was sort of designed for the uh, the D-pad, but Croc kind of controls like a tank, which is why he's got this uh, nifty little quick turn that you see there. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it. He does that little, uh, he does that little head over heels, yeah. He looks like some sort of athletic guy, but uh, oh, there's one of those hidden gems you're talking about. Mm. Yeah, and you would, you wouldn't know that it was here unless you decided to go and get all of these gems. I don't know if I appreciate that or if I hate it. Maybe I do both in equal amounts. Well, I will say that it's actually... It is possible to see which gem, which of the regular gems is actually a hidden gem in disguise. I'll explain either later in this video or in another video, but it is actually slightly telegraphed. Anyway, we, um, we wanted to come into that uh, entrance at the top of the of that previous screen instead of the bottom because it takes us into this area, which we otherwise would have uh, missed. I'm pretty sure we would have missed. Okay, so in addition to possibly missing the red gem, you could also possibly miss out on the purple and the yellow gem if you didn't if you didn't see that little area to walk up at the top there. Indeed. And, uh, I mean, you don't need to get all of the gobbos or all the gems to beat uh, the game. You can just get to the gong at the end of each level and you'll... Beat, uh, you'll end up getting through the game and beating Baron Dante, and that'll be it. Oh, so there's so there's but, no requirement for getting a certain number of gobos to progress. No, no, it's not like uh, it's not doesn't do the Mario 64 star thing. But um, it's once you do beat Dar Dar Baron Dante, it will then tell you like, hey, go get all of the gobos because you haven't finished yet. And then the game calls you out for not playing right. It's like, hey man, you played the game great, and I mean, you played it great in a certain way, but it's not the right way. Maybe you should go back and try again. I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, if you want to be a good player, you would. And that's the, the game's just being passive-aggressive there. Mm. 
I can't help but notice so every time he does a ground pound, it's like he's briefly defying gravity. You know, he has to he has to really gather up that energy in his butt. He's got uh, rockets in his butt. He's like an uh, Astro Boy. No, wait, Astro Boy. Yeah, had, Astro Boy um, had a machine, machine gun butt. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think the rockets were in his feet. Yep. And his arms. He had rockets in his arms as well. Didn't he have rocket arms? Yeah, he probably yeah he probably had rocket arms. Most most good robots do, and uh, Astro Boy is pretty good robot. So, uh, it seems like there are maybe three places you'll see Gabos. Inside a cage, uh, jumping around and yelling, or they'll be, uh, they'll be standing inside boxes. Are they inside boxes? Yep, they are inside boxes. Huh. They are inside, well, there's a, there is a fourth place that you'll see Gabos, which is sort of an extension of inside boxes. Uh, we'll see that in the next level. Uh, and that can be... It can be pretty tricky, uh, those ones. Oh yeah, once you start jumping on a jello, you can't, uh, you can't turn. It's, uh, part of the tankish controls. Are you able to, are you able to turn while you're in mid-air, or is it just, hey, I'm, uh, I'm on the jelly now, and, uh, yeah, we're bouncing this direction. You're not bouncing this direction? Uh, sorry, buddy, can't help you. You can hit the quick turn button, uh, in mid-air and you'll turn around, which is a lot, uh, it's good for turning around without the delay of him having to hop around. Right. If you want to, if you want to speed run it. And on that note, do you also have the speed run record for this game? Uh, no. The hundred percent speed run, maybe. I don't know. I don't think anyone cares enough to run this. Oh yeah. I the, um... uh, I would I would doubt that there are not people. I would doubt that there are not people who are not dedicated enough to speed run this hundred percent. I will uh, check on SDA right after we finish recording this. So that one, that color gem was pretty obviously telegraphed. Oh yeah, it's one it of those ones that's like, hey man, uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing suspicious about me. <laughs> yeah, like why would they put that there if not? Uh oh, uh, that there's is... This sparkle, there's a sparkle behind that rock, and that takes you to a secret area, which oh. usually exists to give you uh, bonus lives. There was one in the first level that I missed because I totally forgot about it, and I could not be fucked to go back and uh, and re-record that. But it was um, in that first screen of the first level. There were a few of those little there were a few of those platforms hanging in midair, yep, and if you yep. stand on one and jump on it a couple of times, it takes you to another bonus thing that is really simple. It's like it basically gives you like three lives. Oh, so how do lives work? I mean, if you take one hit, you lose a life. You uh, hit a critical uh, existence doing, failure. Well, I'm doing really, really well here, so uh, you won't see that until at least the next level. Oh, okay. actually, this might... No, sorry, we are in level three. I forgot where we were. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, first, I'll point out that this is the fourth place you can find gobos. Hiding in minigames. Uh, are they always this minigame, or do they swap? There are, let me think for a second, one, two... Ooh, this guy playing the shell game, he's a little tricky there in the middle. But he's no match for your fine eyes. Definitely not. Um, I think there are three or four mini... No, there are four mini games. Okay, so, so the them... shell game's one of them, and we'll see the other ones. Uh, we will indeed. And okay, okay. They will come back in a, a very big way, uh, much later in the game. For now, they're just like an amusing distraction. Uh, this box you can push, I'm pretty sure only on the purple floor. And those rat things are the worst, uh, one of the most annoying enemies. Is it because they steal your change? No, because like they, it's hard to tell exactly at which point they're going to chase after you uh, and bite bunch you. Of jerks. Like that. Yeah. And that's how and that's how health works, uh, exactly like Sonic. Okay. Yeah, see for a little while I assumed they were bad guys because they, you know, spent a lot of time in the sewers training turtles, but I can see this is a lot worse now. Um, and uh, so yeah, if you so... get hit you lose all of your gems, you at most you could pick up, I think, fifteen or twenty back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you take another hit before, well, you've got invincibility frames, but it also does the sonic thing of um, if you bounce twice on like lava, then you're instantly dead. 
And aside so, from that, um, uh, yeah. what's the story with uh, gems? If you collect a hundred, you uh, you get a certain yes. amount or something. Yes, hundred like is a one hundred gems is an extra life, and you can add. I think you'll probably see that at the end of this level on the on the result screen. You'll see my gems tally up, and it will probably pass one hundred. Okay. Okay. Uh, other question, what's the deal with the arrows on the box? It doesn't seem like you're only restricted to pushing it in one direction, it's just, the arrows just tell you you can push the box? Yes, the arrows tell you. Even though there are no boxes that you will, um, encounter of that nature, that you cannot, like, the wooden ones, you can always push. They will always have the arrows on them, so, seems pointless anyway. Well, there might be a point to it, I mean, what if... What if the rats have to push the box, but they're obnoxiously dumb, and uh, they don't know how to push boxes? Or if, you know, a five-year-old was playing this game, like I probably was back when this came out. I, I, know, when this, I, too, I, came was, out I too was once five years old. Oh, that key was hidden behind the gong. That is a common dick move that this game is going to pull on us. That's, uh, they usually did that kind of thing for, uh, what was it called? Didn't they do it a lot in Spyro? I never, I never actually got into Spyro. I played, like, I think I played two or three of them for, like, those demo stages that would come on the PlayStation 1 discs. Right, but they do that kind of thing where they'd hide gems in these really obnoxious spots, like, Oh, it's right in this corner. I hope you didn't miss it. Uh, uh, you missed it. Yeah. Anyway, the bonus stage for this one is the second kind of minigame we can encounter. This is, uh, Whack a Sheep. Because crocodiles hate sheep. I understand. I, you know, for the longest time I thought it was wolves, because, you know, Looney Tunes would never lie to me. But, uh, come to think of it, it makes sense that crocodiles don't like sheep. I mean, they, uh, they are kind of jerks. And you gotta look at, look at Croc. He's just got that, he's got that brown backpack and no personality. If that's not a jerk, I don't know what is. Croc is kind of a jerk. He's gonna be abusing many kinds of wildlife, uh, throughout this adventure. Oh snap. Anyway, um, I'm kind of ex showing uh, how he, how the jumping is really, really stupid. Like, you can move in any direction uh, from where you start, and it's pretty much the only way that you're going to do well enough in this um, in this minigame to get the gobbo, because you have to do well enough to get the gobbo. Right. I almost did perfectly. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you try to, the, like, turn... Uh, what, what is good enough as compared to perfect? I... I have no idea what the threshold is to get the gobbo, but I take no chances. And yeah, if you if you try to like turn to actually face the buttons, then yeah, you're never gonna get it. Well, I mean, nobody really has time to turn, and that way you have a quick turn button. I mean, it's right there in the name; it's quick. But that it's like the quick turn in Deadly Premonition. It only does 180 degrees. Uh... Oh, so this is what Baron Dante uh, spends his free time doing now that he's captured all the gobbos. He uh, morphs the you know local wildlife into cool ass bosses. Well, you and by know, cool ass uh, bosses yeah. I mean like it's kind of interesting bosses. Ooh, that's um. Actually, uh, no, scratch that. They're not even kind of interesting. They're really dumb most of the time. Um, this is a boss stage. It's two screens of collecting a bunch of gems and then the boss. Uh, there are no gobbos, so we're just gonna speed through this. Okay, yeah, I can dig it. I mean, if you had, uh, if you had gabas inside your boss levels, that might make things a little, uh, a little dangerous. You know, you might not be able to, uh, might not be able to focus on one thing or the other. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, it really is just like, hey, here's all of your, here's a couple of screens to build up some gems and maybe even get an extra life or two. And once you, and then you can go and fight the boss. And if you get hit once, you will lose all of the gems and only be able to get back, you know, 10 or 15. Well, right, yeah, and, you know, it's just like Sonic, you eventually run out of coins. Do they, uh, during the boss stage, do they give you up any opportunities to get more coins, or is it just, uh, hey, we gave, it, gave you everything you get, and good luck, buddy? Uh, yeah, that's basically it. You get, uh, no chances. Also, if you die in the boss, you'll come back here, you'll re respawn in the boss stage, so you won't get uh, to get any more gems, unless you quit out of the level. Uh, this is any, this is basically what every boss in the game is like, you just run around until they get really obviously tired, and then you whack them, with really, really terrible hit detection. Just like real life. So, uh, 
what is this thing? It, it was a... Uh... It was a duck. Yeah, it, it was a duck, and now it looks like it's a... Uh... Now it looks like it's one of those things that, you know, people use to, uh, you know, the, the tipping birds that go up and down into water. Um, uh, it, it had a name. I forgot to double-check uh, what, what his name was. Uh, it said it on I'm, the uh, level I'm title. going to assume it's Tipsy. I said it on the level title. Uh, but anyway, when you get all six gobbos in three sta in the first three st well, in a th three-stage set and kill the boss, it opens up this secret, uh area or secret level and the secret levels are what we actually want to get we don't really care about the gobbos the only one we would have to rescue is king gobbo but this um this secret level is the one that we actually want to get uh something out of okay uh wh what are we getting out of these well there are no gobbos again so we can collect a whole bunch of gems and some lives again and then we'll get something. We will get a certain something. I don't know why I'm hiding this, because uh, the manual itself literally tells you uh, all of this. You get a puzzle piece uh, if you beat this. There are eight puzzle pieces for the eight secret levels, and when you get all eight puzzle pieces, it will unlock the final island. You know, I'm seeing a lot of similarities with Banjo Kazooie here. You've got a you've got a bird who's helping you. You are it's, some. It, uh, it, it really isn't. You're an animal. Uh, you have a backpack, and you're collecting puzzle pieces. I think this was the uh, seems to me like this was probably the prototype for uh, Banjo Kazooie. This was uh, actually supposed to be a Yoshi game. I'm pretty sure. It was originally uh, like billed as like a, you know, a Yoshi spin-off platformer, and then Nintendo, I think, just said no. You know, as much as everybody complains about New Yoshi Story, you know, not really taking any risks, uh, at least it wasn't this. Uh, so those new enemies, I'm really not giving them any sort of chance. I just kill them immediately before they get to do the one thing that makes them uh, slightly different. And what is it that makes them different? Oh, well, this guy's gonna respawn, so maybe we'll see now. Oh, no, never mind. No, no, he's just, uh, he's just hanging out. He's just, uh, caught in that never-ending cycle of life and death. You know, the whole Buddhist thing. Though I, that might be different, come to think of it. Nah, we'll totally call it Buddhist. So, uh, I walked up there even though I won't need to go there. Oh, that's what he does. He spits out these really tiny, uh, like, I don't know, energy balls. They probably have really large hitboxes, because a lot of stuff in this game does. Um, but that's what he does. He just spits those out. Oh, so I see he uh, he got his training from the Dragon Ball Z school of uh, baddies. I, I don't... I'm pretty sure that the Dragon Ball Z baddies had, like... They threw their energy balls a bit further than that. His just immediately started bouncing. Well, nobody ever said he was a good Dragon Ball Z villain. I mean, look at the guy. Uh... What was I saying before that? Oh yeah, I walked up. Uh, I walked up that path, even though I needed to come back here to do a bit of backtracking. Uh, these puzzle piece levels, uh, if I recall correctly, they tend to have uh, quite a bit of this, and because you know that there are no gobos to collect, um, usually the reward is just a life. Right, and they also seem uh, they seem significantly bigger compared to what we've seen so far. I think there's still the same number of screens. Uh, I think there's, you know, like five or six screens to a, to any level. Mm. Uh, it's just the... Yeah, they can just sort of, uh, seem a bit bigger or smaller. Yeah, maybe it's my imagination playing with me then. Because yeah, it, it just seems like there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in these. Mm. Um, so the worms, uh, you can also just, like, stand right up against them, and they won't come out, which is... The worms are just weird. Like, why are they worms? Uh, my assumption would be, you know, since this is maybe a Yoshi knockoff to begin with, that activity kind of reminds me of piranha plants. Maybe. Uh, that's a path that we're not going to go on yet, because uh, that's where the puzzle piece is. And we want to first collect as many gems and as many lives as possible, because uh, I'm going to spoil this right now. I need as many lives as I can for when World 3 hits. Because World 3 is when the game gets seriously bullshit. The, uh, the platforming is kind of... and, like, the controls are kind of stupid in the first couple of worlds, especially World 2, because World 2 is going to have ice physics. 
Uh, but World 3 is where it suddenly piles on the absolute bullshit. Really? Oh, that's the maximum number of lives you can have. Seems like it's a uh, decent number. Probably 99. Hmm. Keeping it classy. I mean, 99's a good number. I can appreciate it. I'm a big fan of 99. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's the number. You get smart. Well, I don't know. It's probably not as good as 100, but I, I guess it's still a pretty good number. But 100's, you know, that's just... It's kind of showing off at that point. Also, well, 100 is the lowest of the three-digit numbers. Well, you know, there's Whereas, there's no kill like overkill, and let's face it, if if all you're dealing is if all you're dealing with is double digits, well, hey, you um you can afford to show off a little bit. Double digits are nice and digestible. I like them. All right, all right. Oh, fine. there it. Did you see that at the top of the uh, screen? Uh. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, There's our puzzle piece, and uh, we're going to ignore it for the moment. Yay. Uh, oh, you got me all excited for nothing. What the hell? Well, if you thought that was exciting, just get ready for this the thrilling room where we're going to have to climb up a very tall tower of platforms. So tall, in fact, that we are going to do it at 300% speed, and it's what? still going to take a while. Wow, this, uh... Yeah, you'd have to... There's I mean, I could probably have been a bit riskier <laughs> with the jumps, but I kind of wanted to make sure. There's nothing to do on these platforms. What? Why would you do this? This is awful. Well, why else? <laughs> but to get lives. Uh, I, I don't mean from a gameplay standpoint. I mean from a development standpoint. Why would you do this to people? That's awful. <laughs> These, they really aren't that, in, they weren't that good de uh, designers. Uh, this will be, this will also become apparent by World 3. It's, um, like, there's a lot of things wrong with, like, it gets difficult in, like, the most lazy and frustrating ways. No, that's okay. I mean, you know, sometimes you just hit crunch time and, you know, you don't have time to... I don't have time to make a good game anymore, so you just gotta fill in the fill in the blank spots with uh, crap. Yeah, that, that's that's probably it. And, I think uh, the uh, we were uh, yeah we're, we we missed that, but we got the puzzle piece, and that's the end of the level. Okay, yeah. So uh, and you don't even have to hit the gong or anything. It's just puzzle piece ends it. So interesting. I can take that. Yeah, which is what which is why we skipped it. So yeah, thank thanks for joining me. We'll hopefully see more of this exciting adventure of collecting weird 2D, 3D fuzzballs. I can't wait.